many, many principles that we saw. But today we're going to see one very important principle. There's one theme that runs in the early church. You know what it is? The early church was filled with the Holy Spirit. It was filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the work of God and a person must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me show you a few verses. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's, why, that's what you find. Chapter 4 and verse 8. Chapter 4 and verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Chapter 6 verse 3. Brothers, choose seven men among, from among who uh, are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. Chapter 7 verse 55. But Stephen full of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 9 verse 17. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus <clears throat> uh, who appeared to you on the road ha were, as you were coming has sent me so that you may see again be filled with the Holy Spirit. Chapter 11 verse 24 24 uh, He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Chapter 13 verse 9 you find then Saul who was also called Paul filled with the Holy Spirit Spirit, chapter 13, uh, and, and, and you go on talking about this. What do you see? A person is a filled. You saw P Peter, you saw Peter in chapter uh, 1, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, you find he's again filled. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then again, he's again filled with the <coughs> Holy Spirit. So, what, what is this filling of the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? What is the whole <coughs> idea of a relationship of the Holy Spirit with the church? We want to find out what the Word of God has to say. Let's pray and then we will uh, study the Word. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for this wonderful, beautiful morning that you showed us thy Word. And uh, thank you for the wonderful testimony that we heard. We are so challenged. And Lord, we come to you for IOC that you may take control of us and lead us and guide us. Thank you, dear Lord. We pray with thanksgiving. And we pray that you may break this word and teach us what the Holy Spirit does to the church. Teach us thy word. We pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In the backdrop of that, please turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. I'm sorry. Verse 18. Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery, instead be filled with the Spirit. Instead be filled with the Spirit. You find here, Paul is writing to the Ephesian church and says, what not to do and what to do. He says, do not be drunk with wine. Do not be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is not enough to say, yes, I am not drunk on wine, but there is something more to be done. What is that? To be filled with the Holy Spirit. A believer must be a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Why is Paul comparing the filling of the Holy Spirit with wine? Of course, that's in the negative sense. Why is the wine now compared to the Holy Spirit? Why should a person, why should a believer be not drunk on wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit? Number one reason. Number one reason. See, when a person drinks, I'm talking about the world, when a person drinks, now the drink starts controlling him. The person loses control. Initially what happens is, a person starts drinking and he's in control, but after some time, you find the drink now controls this man. Number two, it always produces a desire for more. That's why people who have addiction, it's very difficult to fight. They have great difficulty in fighting against it. Why? Because it always gives you an oomph and says, you need to go more. People find reasons, right? There's some, there's somebody said like, uh, the people find reasons. If they're happy, they want to drink. If they're sad, they want to drink. Why? They just want an excuse. Why? Inside, there is something that is pushing them. 
There's more control, there's more desire for more. That's what's happening here. Paul says, we are believers and we should have that quality, number one. What is that? The spirit must control us. Just like in the world, the wine controls the people. The Holy Spirit must control us. Number two, it always must give us the desire for more. I want to share with you today, I'm going to give you a lot of verses. Uh, I want you to know what the Holy Spirit does. What does the Holy Spirit do? What is the role of the Holy Spirit with the church? You, it would be great if you write, the, write this down because you can go home and study this. Number one, the Holy Spirit is what regenerates the believing sinner. See, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what does the Bible say? That a person who is a sinner and starts believing in God, he is born again because of who? Because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit God, he comes and starts, <clears throat> he, he gives you the rebirth. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, he saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit which is giving rebirth to you and to me. So please remember, there are five things, and I'm going to talk about the fifth one more. Number one, the renewal, the rebirth, rebirth happens because of the Holy Spirit. Number two, we are baptized uh, by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptized the believing sinner. Chapter 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, capital S, into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit, capital S, to drink. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. We were all baptized by one spirit number three when a person believes in lord jesus christ what happens is now the holy spirit starts coming and living inside of you john chapter 14 and verse 16 john 14 and 16 and i will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever the spirit of the truth forever in the Old Testament, the spirit would come upon an individual and then it would go away. Samson, when he were to fight, he would get the power from God when the spirit of God would come upon him and then it would be gone. And then again, another occasion comes, he would again start, the Holy Spirit, God would come, accomplish and go away. That is the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he doesn't come as a visitor and leave. He always indwells in you. He always lives inside of you. That is the whole idea of Jesus Christ ascending into heaven. He said, I will be gone and then you will have the Holy Spirit come and he will live with you forever. Number four, number four, we are all sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter one and verse 13. Ephesians 1 and 13. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. A believer, a believer is sealed by the Holy Spirit. Number five, the fifth one. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4. We just saw that. And all the people there were filled by the Holy Spirit. Five things. If you, if you have written down, you can just go through it once again. Five things that the Holy Spirit does. Number one, the Holy Spirit causes the rebirth. Number two, Holy Spirit baptizes the believing sinner. Number three, Holy Spirit dwells in the sinner, believing sinner. Number four, Holy Spirit seals the believer. Four things. Fifth thing, the Holy Spirit fills the believer. A believer is filled by the Holy Spirit. A believer is filled by the Holy Spirit. Now listen carefully. We talked about five things that the Holy Spirit does. A person who has genuinely accepted Jesus Christ as a savior will never lose these first four. Do you hear me? Will never lose these first four. But there's one thing that a believer could lose and that is the fifth one. And the fifth one is what? 
filling of the Holy Spirit. The rebirth is confirmed. Baptism is confirmed. Indwelling is confirmed. Sealing is confirmed. But filling depends on you. We could be, we, we are still believers. That's why some are victorious. Some are defeated. Some are defeated. A person must be filled by the Holy Spirit. A person who is filled by the Holy Spirit. See, whenever the great things happen in the word of God, if you study what the portions that I taught, it's all where the person was filled by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Why was Peter filled? And then again you find he was filled again. Why was Paul filled? And then he was filled again. You know, somebody said, because we leak. When we are filled by the Holy Spirit, we do so wonderful thing. And then one sin comes from somewhere. One temptation comes from somewhere. And we yield to that. We are not that believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit. We are still child children of God. But we are not there yet. So, what happens there? What happens there is, we lose the peace. We lose that peace with God. We lose the peace that's supposed to be in us. The first four will give us peace with God, but the fifth one, the filling of the Holy Spirit, will assure the peace of God. We have that peace with God. I tell you, as a preacher, when I stand, I can easily know, I can easily know, uh, how, how the end of the message would be even before I start you know why? because I know whether I'm full or empty you don't know that you know for yourself because there is something called conscience the Holy Spirit will keep pricking you what we do to the Holy Spirit most of the time as believers is we just think we got the fire insurance we went to the Lord, we said, Lord, forgive me, we got a fire insurance and we know we are going to heaven. It's all settled is what we think. No. God wants us to do much more than that. Otherwise, he would have taken you and me from this earth as soon as we believed in him. God wants to do greater things through you and me. That's what he says. You know, you will never find a leader who says, I want you to do more than me. It's always like, I always done more than you. You cannot reach me. There's one, there's one man, uh, I don't want to tell his name. He's a very big, very big, uh, I think the world's greatest leadership guru. The world's latest, uh, the greatest leadership guru. I got to sit next to him and we were talking. I said, hey, I want to, I want to, I love leadership, Christian leadership. I've been a student of this for, uh, my, my doctorate is in leadership. So I want to spend some time with you. You know, he said, you can't reach me. He said, you can't reach me. In the Old Testament, when God was telling uh, Moses, he told Moses, he said, uh, Moses, after you, Joshua will be the leader. Joshua will be the successor. You know, in that occasion, God tells Moses to do something. Turn with me to Numbers. Numbers. Uh, chapter 27 and verse 20. Numbers chapter 27 and verse 20. You find, give him, he's talking about Joshua. God is talking to Moses and telling him to give some of your authority so that the whole Israel like community will obey him. Moses, give him what? Some of your authority. Look at what Jesus Christ says. He says what? You will do greater things than what I did. What is the change there? Why this difference? It is because of the Holy Spirit. He wants to accomplish more and more through you and me. How do we leak? How do we leak? There are two ways, two reasons why we keep falling. 
two reasons. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 19. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. It says, do not quench the Spirit. One way we can hurt God, we can live defeated lives is when we quench the Holy Spirit. Not only that, much worse than that is uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. You find it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Many times we quench the Spirit and we also do grieve the Holy Spirit. What is grieving? What is grieving? You know, when, when, you, when you have a loss, when you have a loss, uh, somebody dies in the family. Till, uh, till the body is buried, it's all uh, logistics. Where to bury, where to go, get the pastor, where to get the, you know, a casket, you know, how much to uh, spend, who are the people coming, all this happens. But one particular day, everybody is gone. All the relatives, friends, and everybody is gone. And you are all alone. And that's when you start feeling over the loss. The Bible says, we grieve the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit. We try to quench. We try to quench the Holy Spirit. God is trying to tell. So there's one answer to this question. One big answer, one big question that we always had. And many people have been asking me this question. How do we tell the gospel to the people? Why am I not able to tell the gospel to the people? Everything, we have all the facilities available. We have all the resources available. Why are we not able to give the gospel? This is the answer today. A person who is not filled by the Holy Spirit, who is quenching the Spirit, who is grieving the Spirit, will not have the passion to save the perishing people. Personally, even I have been trying to look for this answer and say, where is the answer to this question? Always we were thinking about the outside. It's not outside, it is inside. Why does, why does Levin auntie have that passion and why don't we have that passion? Why does somebody else have that passion and why don't we have that passion? Answer is this. The difference is in the filling. It's in the filling. When Peter stood up that day and he spoke, he was an ordinary fisherman. You know, if he had stood up there, what gave him the courage? What gave him the courage? Tell me something. Just think about the whole story of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. What gave him that courage that day? It is the Holy Spirit. Because God said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will also receive power. The dynamite, the great power that comes with the Holy Spirit. We try to work, we try to give the gospel to the people, not spending time with God. We don't go and ask God and say, Lord, I want to talk to one soul today. I want to talk to one person today. That is when you go to God and ask in prayer that you will start getting filled. The filling cannot come from any other source except from Lord Jesus Christ. I think we need to start quit quit activities and start going more to the Lord in prayer. That's where we are filled and refilled. Just imagine if you spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on the ga on a car and they said you can get this car only for 17 gallons of gas in your car and that's it. After that you use and throw. Would you spend thirty thousand dollars? You know why we still, why we spend $30,000? Because there is a gas station. There is gas available. We have to fill that again and again for it to keep running. That's how our lives are. What is the meaning of uh, uh, filling? Why is the filling uh, uh, recurring? Why should it be recurring? You know, when the Holy Spirit God came on you once, the first time, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, what happened was, we 
allowed, it's like you allow a guest into your house. And what is the area that you limit him to? The sitting room. Or the sitting hall. That is all. But as you grow in intimacy, where, where, where do you go? The whole house. The whole house. That is what is called filling. You give access. There's nothing that you uh, uh, restrict to yourself and say, go, take it. And that's how we keep allowing the Holy Spirit to come and fill every compartment of our lives. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, when we quench the Holy Spirit, the question that we may have is, how do I regain it? As of now, as we are sitting in this uh, building, we are at different spiritual levels and different uh, relationships, levels of relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of us have quenched the Holy Spirit. Some of us have grieved the Holy Spirit. Some of, our, some of us probably are not even, uh, not even have been born again. That's why I always keep talking about, let's not live in illusion. Let's not think that I'm saved. Yesterday I was in Philadelphia and then there was, we were having this discussion and one lady said, uh, I, uh, I always have this doubt, I think I am saved. I said, why are you saying you, you think you are saved? There's no uh, middle ground, I may be, I may not be, no, no, no. Either you are saved or you are not saved. Let's not be in an illusion and think uh, maybe I am saved. I'll, let me tell you something. The, there is a difference between regeneration and reformation. Reformation is you are walking, you suddenly fell down and then you just shirk the dirt off and say, okay, I'm good, I'm gone. You are not born again. Being born again is committing your life totally to God and surrendering. And the question is, do you know, do you know that day when you went to Jesus Christ and said, Lord, I am a sinner, please forgive me, I am sorry. I feel ashamed of what I've done. Do we have that day in our lives? If not, then you need to be born again. Because the filling cannot happen without the regeneration. You must be born again and that's only when the rest of the things come. We leak. We quench the Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit. How do I come back to the Lord? Does God, God give the access back to you and me? Yes. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? What is the walking in the light? Walking in the light is for the believers. If you walk in the light, but if we walk in the light, he is in the, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. Therefore, as believers, when we commit sin, and then we, we quench the spirit. When we grieve the spirit, there is a gas station available. You know what that is? That's where you get the blood of Jesus Christ. You go to God and say, Lord, forgive me once again. Wash me once again. Cleanse me thoroughly once again. We live our Christian life so easy. We take it easy. We think everything is going on smooth. But we need to remember that probably we are hurting God. Probably we are grieving God. Please remember number one, we need to go for the refilling. How do we regain that? It's by going to him, eh, to the blood of Jesus Christ. Same chapter, same, uh, uh, same chapter, come to verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Please remember, I repeat again, these words are not written to uh, uh, non-Christians, to unbelievers. These are words written to the believers. So a believer needs to go and confess to the Lord and the believer needs to go and ask for the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to be constantly under cleansing. We go to God and say, Lord, I committed this. Please forgive me. We need the blood of Jesus Christ and we need the confession. Confession is a very integral part of a transformation. Did you hear me? 
confession is an integral part of transformation a person cannot change from a sinner to a believer unless you confirm you cannot be changing from a, 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 an unfilled uh, believer to be to a filled believer unless we go and confess in confessing we have that humility in confessing we acknowledge we are wrong in confessing we show the desire to be filled in confessing we uh, ex we, 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 we portray our emptiness and that's what we need in our lives we need in our lives that confession we need that blood of Jesus Christ you know in the in the story of the Israelites there's one beautiful thing that you find Paul uh, we don't know who the author is but he said when the Israelites were walking in the desert listen to me carefully when the Israelites were walking in the desert the rock our capital R rock followed them is what the Bible says the rock followed them why I need cleansing what came out of the rock water came out of the rock so that's why they need that cleansing we believers need to be cleansed we need to go to the go to God and ask for forgiveness in our lives four things five things number one we are born again by the Holy Spirit number two we are baptized by the Holy Spirit number three we are sealed by the Holy Spirit number four we are filled we are uh, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit number five we are filled by the Holy Spirit and there is possibility that we may be quenching and grieving when we quench and grieve we leak how do we get the refilling we go to the blood of Jesus Christ and we go to confess you know without the Holy Spirit the church cannot survive the church cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit Jesus said apart from me you can do nothing apart from me, you can do nothing so we need the God the Holy Spirit to work in our lives let me tell you a few more things uh, nine things what the Holy Spirit does number one the Holy Spirit prays for you and me Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 in the same way the Spirit capital S helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray for but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express the Bible says he prays for you and me there are times when you are weak and we are not able to pray that's where somebody is praying who is that the Holy Spirit number two he will guide you sometimes we need to take decisions we don't know what to which which one to choose what job to choose where to go yeah so these are the questions that we have in our lives and the Bible says John chapter 16 verse 13 John 16 13 but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will guide you into all truth the Holy Spirit will guide us into all the truth first John chapter 2 27 says he will teach us first John chapter 2 and verse 27 the Holy Spirit will teach us 227 says as for you the anointing you receive from him remains in you and do not need anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things and as that anointing is real not care of feed just as it has taught you remain in him you know many times people think how is it that we are able to learn so many things yesterday I was at Philadelphia we had I finished my, my, my teaching at two o'clock but we had people asking questions for one and a half hours one and a half hours people were asking questions what happens what happens you know, wonderful wonderful discussion that we had and then uh, sometimes some people come and say how do you know all this how do you know all this how do you know all this it's the anointing that God gives us he can teach you too he can teach you too when you say Lord teach me thy word do you think God, God says no no you have to go to seminary only, or only, only through the pastor no God can teach you that too he is a teacher to everybody but definitely God has put teachers in the in the church that they can explain things much better and more that's a whole 
idea of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Number four, he empowers. The Holy Spirit will empower. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. So God says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will receive power. He empowers. Number five. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Chapter 3 verse 18. And we who with unveiled faces are, ref and, uh, are all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? He conforms you and me to the image of Christ. See, what is the whole idea of Christian life? Walking into the likeness of Jesus Christ. How do we become like Jesus Christ? Who guides you? Who teaches you? Who tells you how to become like him? It is the Holy Spirit that teaches you. He tells you and he conforms you. He molds you to become like Christ. That's the whole task of the Holy Spirit. And number six, the Holy Spirit strengthens the new nature that is in us. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you and pow with power through his spirit in your inner being. So we gain strength through the Holy Spirit. Number 7, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10, you find the seventh thing that the uh, Holy Spirit can do. Uh, verse, chapter 2 verse 10. Uh, but God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. He reveals those great biblical truths. He reveals the biblical truths to you and me. Eighth, eighth, uh, eighth thing that the Holy Spirit does. Uh, Romans 8 and verse 16. Romans 8 and 16. Romans 8 and 16. It says... Uh, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. This is where this is the uh, verse I gave to that lady who said, "How do I know I am born again? How do I know I am born again?" This is the verse, Romans eight sixteen. What does it say? You have that assurance. You have that assurance that now, even if I die, I know I am going to heaven. I have no absolutely no uh, fear, no doubt at all. That's what this Holy Spirit does. The last thing that the Holy Spirit does. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. Be because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit gives us the liberty. It gives us the liberty. Nine things that the Holy Spirit does. You know, that's why this is God's work. And without the Holy Spirit, if we try to do things in a man's way, we are at loss. There's a beautiful statement in Galatians. I want you to look that. Look at that. Chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 3. Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, capital S, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? You started with the Spirit and now you want to attain it by what? Human effort. So what happened? You missed out the Holy Spirit altogether. You missed out the Holy Spirit altogether. We, we quench the Spirit, we grieve the Spirit and we think, yeah, we can do ministry. Hold on. We cannot. It is God's work. This is God's church. And saving the souls. How do, we, how do we develop that passion? It's not through books. It's not through tapes. It's not by watching uh, YouTube videos. It's not by just coming to church. It's not by singing songs. Nothing. It's only by being filled by the Holy Spirit. And that can happen only when you go personally to God and ask Him to forgive your sins. Ask to, uh, for the blood of Jesus Christ and say, Lord, use me as you want to. Tanti is a great example. I can tell you. I don't know if we can live that long, 79. But at the age of 79, I don't know if I can say that we, we started seven churches here in this country. 
I don't know. Inaccessible places. There's one man called Surya Rao in Vishakhapatnam. He, he did ministry. You know what was his vehicle? Horse. Why? Because he has to climb those hills where there's no road. There are people living there on the top, on the hilltops. He goes and gave gospel. And we went for a special meeting from, I think, five different hilltops. We had 300 people come and listen to the word of God. We just go as visitors, as special people. Yeah, go and sit there. But all the hard work and the labor is all put by this man all through the year. I tell you, the labor in the Lord will never go in vain. God wants to bless you and me. We want to reach out souls. We want to reach people. Tell the people. And once we lose that perspective, I can guarantee you, we have grieved the Holy Spirit. If you say, I don't have that passion. I don't have that desire. I don't know why. I want to tell you, brother and sister, either you are not born again, not at all born again. You just, just clean yourself a little bit. Or we are grieving the Holy Spirit. That's, there's only two, two, okay, two, two possibilities. There's no third ground at all. Either you are not born again at all. Just because of the Christian atmosphere, we just come because our parents were Christians, we go to church, we just sing songs, we are in a, we are in a group of people who are Christians, that is all. We try to absorb the Christian culture. Absorbing Christian culture is not the point. Being born again, being regenerated by the blood of Jesus Christ is what is more important. That's when we can tell the people. There are only two things. Either you're not born again at all. Number two, if you're born again, you have four things guaranteed. But the fifth thing, the filling of the Holy Spirit, is what is lacking. If that is what it is, I want to ask you today to ask God to forgive you and me. We don't know how long our life is. The Bible says your life is like a vapor. We can plan so many things, but I can tell you, there are some people, maybe you know them or you don't know them, they are not waking up tomorrow morning. You don't, you don't know who they are. They are not waking up tomorrow morning. And if it is you, if it is me, after we are dead and gone, we have no opportunity to save souls. Mark Cahill wrote a book, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven. I'm, I'm sure he's bringing those books. One thing you can't do in heaven. You know what you can do in heaven? Evangelism. Why? Everybody's saved. One thing you can't do in heaven is reach people. Therefore, the only opportunity we have is here on this earth. I tell you, church, God has great plans for IOC. I'm going around to different churches. You really don't know how privileged we are. We are taking our church for granted. You go around and see. I've been to four churches in, in, in these two, two weeks. And you will see, you'll appreciate. In one church, one brother came and said, you know the singing in our church? The music in our church? One brother came to me in a church and said, Pastor, I know, I know you, I know your church, I know your music ministry. Even before the meeting starts, I want to tell you, if there are any mistakes, please, please forgive us. He doesn't need to do it to me. There was another brother who was sitting next to me and who was a, who was a witness to this. He comes and says, we don't, we don't really cherish our church. We don't really enjoy the salvation that God has given. We are more into activities. We have a great opportunity. You know how many people I've got calls from for this anniversary? For Mark Cale, people are coming from Boston. Boston to New Jersey. They want to come and listen to this man. They have shared what I posted on the Facebook, on their wall, they became friends to me right then and there, and they have shared it to the people. They are calling people from Tom's River. They are people calling from New Jersey. They say, we need to go and listen to this man, and we will be recharged. It's not Mark Cahill, but the Holy Spirit who works through him. 
Church, we need to step up. Reach out to people. That's how we can pluck them from fire. We have to meet people. We have to talk to people. And if we don't do that, we have started with the Spirit, we will continue the work of God in human effort, and that will fail. May God help us to know that we as believers must be filled by the Holy Spirit. And God will use such people for His glory. Let's pray.